All right, good morning. Uh, hopefully everyone is uh, able to see me. Um, we'll start out this morning. I know that we had talked last week about um, we were going to talk more along the lines. One second. We're going to talk more along the lines of uh, some demons and uh, groupings of demons. But uh, as I've said before, I allow the Holy Spirit to lead me in, in what I teach. And I may plan something and you may hear me put it out here. But if the Holy Spirit brings something else upon me, that um, he wants me to teach, then that's what I'm gonna do out of obedience, okay? So today, we're still gonna be talking. God's Got Good News ministry is about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and if we go through the things that Jesus taught us, and we go through how we're supposed to live our lives, we will over time change our lives to come in accordance with what he puts upon us. If we're doing something that we're not supposed to do, he's gonna lead us to, to stop doing that. If we're, um, if he wants us to move, he may lay on our heart to move to a totally different area, just like he did Abraham, and we have to do it, okay? So that's all out of obedience. So today, out of obedience, our topic is going to be, and I'm going to put up a little uh, thing for you to look at real quick. Today's topic is judge yourself before you are judged. Now, judging yourself before you are judged. See, a lot of times, we as believers... We may read the word, we may attend church, go to a couple sermons, teachings, whatever you want to call it, and believe that that we're really, we're walking with Christ, we're doing good. Um, yeah, there may be some struggles that come in our lives. There may be some, some things that will try to throw us off the path. But basically, we believe we're reading, we're, we're walking, excuse me, a good life. And in reality, today's teaching, judge yourself before you're judged. We all know that one day, nobody knows when, there's a reason for that, there's going to be judgment before God. What you do right now is going to determine if you are in that Lamb's Book of Life. So as we go through these scriptures today, and as I'm talking to you, picture yourself standing in, that mirror, in front of that mirror. Look at your life. If, if you're struggling with an addiction, then you know that you're going to be judged for that because you're you're not walking with God. I'm not saying that you're a failure, okay? Please hear my heart. I'm not saying you're a failure, but I'm saying that addiction could separate you from God. You know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he'll make your path straight. When we trust in the Lord with all of our heart. That means that we don't rely on things of this world. Now, I'm not saying if you have a drinking problem or a drug problem that not going to a recovery program is, is going to help you. I'm saying go there, but also put your trust in the Lord. Pray. Seek His guidance. There, there's probably something in your life that you may need deliverance from. All of this comes to the fact that when when you die 
if you die in sin, you're going to be judged and there is no second chance. Okay? There is no second chance. And honestly, if you look at your life right now and you say, okay, if I separate myself, even from family, that is not uplifting, then is it is it going to make me closer to God? Or is that one person what separates me from God? And that's what we have to look at. You know, my, my heart is today that you would hear these words, that they would resonate with you to look at your life, what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're watching, what you're speaking, what you're listening to. All of this is what affects you. We know the mind is like a little computer. Put stuff in there and it stores it. So in, in judging yourself, if you're watching movies that are not uplifting, that or even demonic, which let's be real, there's a lot of demonic stuff out there. There's a lot of stuff we could go into. And, and maybe one day we will. That will show you how the enemy has been infiltrating you since the beginning. But I, d I don't want you to focus on that today. Today I want you to focus on looking at yourself and saying, if I was to be called into judgment today, would I be in the Lamb's Book of Life? Or would I be cast into hell? I know that sounds pretty strong. Because it is. And sometimes you may not please other people. Because people go by feelings and emotions. Maybe you're raised in a family where you're taught one thing about drinking's okay. It's not a bad thing. They drunk in the Bible. And, and by certainly, I'm not saying, because this has to be a personal conviction, that you shouldn't drink at all. In the Bible, there was only wine. But you never see anyone, disciples or Jesus, drunk. That's what I want you to focus on. So that should tell you. Plus, if you go to some verses later on, another teaching maybe we'll talk about them. I think we talk a little bit about them today. But if you fall in some of those categories of things you're doing, you need to judge yourself on them. So let me start off with this. Let's start off with the scripture so that you'll have a starting point. And our first scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 and 32. And it says, For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that he may not be condemned with this world. That we may not be condemned with this world. So, and when I'm talking, telling you about judging yourselves, look at yourselves. If, if you're putting your pleasures and other things before the Lord, before time in prayer, before um, studying the word, then there's that judgment is going to come upon you in judgment day. Trust me, the Lord sees all, hears all, knows all. You're not going to pull one over on him. You're not going to trip him up. Okay, you're not going to hide from him. He knows everything. So you have to decide, Is are you going to let drinking, pornography, drug addiction, um, lust of the flesh, fornication, are you going to let these things separate you from God to where on judgment day you're judged for doing them and you're trying to understand how come your name isn't in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's it. You don't get a do-over. You don't get a do-over. 
It's better to have your life set right now. Okay? It's better to separate yourself from things that are going to separate you from God now. Don't wait. Because you don't know your time of death. And you don't know when Jesus is coming back. When you see him coming on the clouds, it's too late. Judgment is here. Now some of you may say, well, okay, what about things going on in this world? I'm going to say this publicly. There is no political party. There is no denomination that is going to get you in the Lamb's Book of Life. All that's going to get you in that Lamb's Book of Life is the walk and the life you have right now. And if you're honestly sitting there and judging yourself, you'll be in that Lamb's Book of Life. I tell you this because a lot of times right now with things going on, people see everything and they walk out of the judgment seat and into the world and they start conforming to the world and to this political party or that political party. The fact of the matter is only Jesus Christ can save you. Only Jesus Christ. Let me read you this next uh, scripture. I think this kind of gives you a little bit more insight. And I want you to know this is Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. And this is Jesus talking. And he says, Judge not that you be not judged. For what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, I know a lot of people will say, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Ah, you're telling me that I'm not walking with God. You're judging me. Now, the, the, the thing here is that, yeah, you if you're correcting someone, you may be judging them. What you say may be affecting their walk. So how do we change this? My friend, I'm going to tell you, it's really simple because as a believer in Jesus Christ, you should be, when you see a brother in sin, you should tell him, okay? You're not judging him, but you should tell him, hey, John, you walking around looking at that girl, lusting over that girl, you know, you're married, that's not right. You're not judging him. The difference here is how your approach. If you go at him and you're condescending and you're convicting, maybe you're yelling, maybe you're talking abruptly or abrasively, whatever you want to call it, then it's going to be taken the wrong way and that judgment could come back on you. But as Jesus urged his listeners, he said to approach people with kindness, humility, self-awareness. He challenged them to avoid hypocrisy, examining themselves before criticizing others and applying fair standards to their judgment. So if I come to you in a loving voice and say, John, look, you know, I love you, brother. And you and I both know you love Jesus. And you know that if you're to walk as Jesus walked and you're lusting after a woman and you know that Jesus said that even as you look as a woman, it's the same thing as a, and lust at her. It's the same thing as adultery. Then, brother, we, we, we want to get you on the right path. I'm telling you, everything is about approach. It is about approach. That brother, just like you, fights things in the spirit. And if you come at him with the abrasiveness, that spirit 
or whatever is functioning in him is gonna it's gonna puff its muscles so to speak it's gonna come back it's gonna try to get him and you in an argument because it's gonna try to divide you but if you speak in love and and that brother's saved and and he knows the Lord but like all of us guys we're in this is a fight this is a fight we cannot lose some of you may say well then how do I win I'm telling you how to win seek the Lord spend time in the words time in prayer time in speaking in tongues time in fellowship all this stuff is so important that you judge yourself if I go to this party, is it a good party to go to? Oh, wait, it's a Halloween party. That's the connotation behind the party is it's a Halloween party. So you ought not to go. And that would be the right thing. Will people get mad or maybe family say, well, oh, you're judging them. You're not judging them. You may be judging yourself because you want to be with the Lord. And trust me, Come judgment day, all these people that, that claim to be your friends won't be there to speak on your behalf that you are a good person. It's going to be you and the judgment seat. We have to take this serious. We have to truly take this serious. There's no do-overs. If you're living in sin right now and you happen to hear this, I want you to know that judgment is coming. <coughs> Excuse me. But you don't have to be in that judgment. You can be in that Lamb's Book of Life by changing your life. And when you change your life, that means you do away with all the bad stuff. Anything that's against the Word of God, you confess, you tell it to get out, you change your life. Changing your life may cause you to change your friends. May cause you to change some of the things you used to do. Places you used to go. But remember, I just told you, God sees all, hears all, knows all. So if, you're, if you change and you come to the Lord, you confess your sins and you're working to walk. The Holy Spirit, remember, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. He's ready to work, my friends. He's ready to help you to take on this judgment within yourself. So that when it comes time for the final judgment, you're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And you're going to know that you've made it. None of those friends are going to be there. None of these people, not even your wife or your children, are going to be with you during that judgment. I know it sounds alone, but my friend, if you strive to judge yourself so that you walk like Christ walked, your family, I promise, will see it. Your children will see it. They may even have the desire to give their life to Christ, and that would be an awesome thing. And then you can teach them about that judgment and how important it is that in judgment, that they even start judging themselves. And you'll see as they start judging themselves and they start walking with the Lord, that this effect affects everybody. If they're married, it'll affect their wives. If you have grandchildren, it's going to affect the grandchildren. <laughs> and you're going to be, you're going to know, even if you die before Jesus comes back, you're going to know that your family is set up for success in the Lord. Because we don't know when he's coming back. You don't know if today is your last day. You just don't know. So why take that chance? Why put yourself in a position where there's not going to be anybody to help you? And let's look at this next scripture. this comes to us from John chapter 8 verse 7 and 9 it says so when they continued asking him 
he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him cast, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus left alone, was left alone, and the woman standing in its midst. See, in this scripture here, you don't know other people's walks. Let's be real. We don't know a lot of things that, that people struggle with or what they're dealing with in their lives. We may just, with this lady, she was caught in adultery. So these Pharisees and these Jewish people were judging her based on a law, but they were not perfect. So when we talk about judging others, I'm telling you, judge yourself first. Judge yourself first. And if you judge yourself first before judgment day, you may have may find yourself having compassion to minister as Jesus did to this woman. He could have judged her. He was the son of God. What she did was wrong. But that was not what he was there for. Many times people want to judge other people for their situations without understanding the full situation. If you go to court and you stand before a judge, that judge doesn't just pass judgment. Okay, uh, Bobby said you stole, so you're guilty of stealing poop. No, he listens to the facts listen to the facts so when you are judging yourself put out all the facts about yourself maybe it's your upbringing maybe somewhere along the line there's an iniquity or a sin in your life that you didn't know about but in judging yourself asking the Lord why am I like this why did I do this um, is there something in me, Father God, that is causing me to make these bad decisions or these bad choices? And the Holy Spirit, who speaks the word of God, is going to reveal things to you. Then you can change it. Now you're judging yourself, but you're also changing yourself. So that when that time comes that someone is before you or you see a brother who's in sin and you want to help him, you help him. By having humility, compassion. And in doing this, you're setting him up to hear the love of Christ. And you will plant a seed. You may water that seed. You may even reap the harvest out of that seed. But whatever you do, God sees all, knows all, hears all. And that's what he's commissioned you to do as a, as a follower of Jesus Christ is to spread the gospel. Tell people. Tell people about God. Tell people how great God is, what he's done for you. Don't be afraid to say, I used to be in sin and, and I used to do this sin. See, we, we're caught up so much that we don't even want people to see that we... We want people to think we've always been this believable, solid... Christian, and when in reality, if we judge ourselves, we know that in telling someone, just like a drug addict would tell a former drug, a former drug addict, excuse me, would tell a drug addict, I've been there, I've been a drug addict, I've, I've been to the lowest parts, and that person has a different outlook because now they don't see a holier than thou person, they see someone who's been through the storm. And they know there's hope. And in that hope, they'll start judging themselves to get out of whatever it is that's caused them to be where they're at. You're going to see as we go on too, we're going we're to talk more about um, 
some open doors and stuff like that, but we're not going to get into it today. Today we want to stick with this judgment because a lot of times we judge other people and we don't even judge ourselves and we, we have this image that we're good and we haven't done anything wrong when in reality we still have sin in our lives and if you have sin in your life, no matter how much you try to help someone out and, and judge them, you're going to come off without humility. You're going to come off with condescending. You're going to come off offensive. And that person, I'll give you a, a really good example. If you go to church and, and you drink on Friday or Saturday or Sunday at the football game, you drink four or five beers, come on people, we know that that's under the influence of alcohol, you can say what you want. That person that's with you that doesn't know Jesus, now you're trying to judge him and tell him, hey, you know, if you came to the Lord, you know, you'd have this great life and stuff. But because he's doing the same thing you're doing, he can't judge himself because he sees no difference. He sees no difference. And if he sees no difference between you and him, he's not going to go to, to the church. He's not going to trust in God because he doesn't see a difference. He can't judge himself because the person that's trying to help him judge himself isn't judged themselves. They still have all this error and stuff in their life they've not dealt with. Okay, let's now look at Romans chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. And it says, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge, another you condemn yourself for you who judge practice the same thing but we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things and do you think this O oh man you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same that you will escape the judgment of God? I want that to, to set into you for a minute. That if you're drinking, if you're partaking, and you're walking in sin, and you judge someone for that same sin, Maybe they drink more than you, so you think you're okay. <laughs> My friend, it's not, it, it's the same thing. Come judgment day, you may think you're perfect and you've walked in this sinless life and then you get a, up before judgment seat. They open the Lamb's Book of Life and they look at you and say, away with you, I never knew you. That noise. Got a little background noise here. Let's see if I can eliminate it here. Give me just one second, everybody. Hopefully, does that make it better? All right. Well, I heard it again. So it's something else. Uh, hold on, we'll go back to our uh, other speaker. Does it sound better? Or even better? I don't know. Anyway, we'll go with this for right now. It's too loud, that's fine. Okay, give me just one second, everybody. Okay, I think we're better. All right, we'll just switch off of this lapel. So, what I want you to understand out of this is that if you've committed adultery and now you're going to judge someone 
who's committing adultery. But yours happened years ago. But you've never confessed it. You've never asked for forgiveness. Or maybe you asked for forgiveness, but it wasn't heartfelt. You're going to be judged by that. Okay? You're going to be judged by that. And my hope is that you would sit there and look at your life before you judge somebody. And you have, I, I call it a self check. You have to sit down, spend some time with the Lord, ask Him to reveal things to you. And I promise you that as you do that, He's going to reveal some things to you, and you're going to be what? I, I some things you're not even going to realize. I'll give you a prime example. A while back, I was talking to a guy here, telling him about forgiving his father. He was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I forgave my father. And, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit come to me and lay upon my spirit that I needed to forgive my father for something that happened when I was 14. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that was 50 years ago. So you kind of know my age. Doesn't really matter. But that was 50 years ago. This was within the last couple of months. So as soon as that was revealed to me, I knew I had to repent. Because one thing in judgment is unforgiveness. If you see a man or a woman or a child and they're not forgiving someone for an offense and you're like well wait a minute you're supposed to forgive but you have unforgiveness in you if you're tight with the Holy Spirit if you're seeking the Holy Spirit to speak to you and he speaks to you like he did with me that day then I had to stop what we were doing and confess my sin ask for forgiveness because that could be a judgment upon me my friends because I didn't judge myself. But in this walk, you have to be open to the Holy Spirit to reveal stuff to you. And realize that in judging yourself, you need to get that unforgiveness out. Because unforgiveness will separate you from God. I didn't write the scripture down because I didn't expect to be talking about unforgiveness at this point. But if... It says in the Bible, and you can look it up, you can Google it, that if you don't forgive, your Father in Heaven won't forgive you. Think about that. That's a serious deal. That's something you need to take to heart. I did. And by the grace of God, I was able to deal with it. And that's what we're talking about here, about judgment. You have to be willing to judge yourself to the deepest levels. And that's hard. But it will be the thing that separates you from someone who's in the world and someone who's in Christ. Okay? Let's go to this next scripture. It's a little bit longer. It's not the longest we have today, but it's a little bit longer comes to us from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 7. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, in offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. <coughs> Excuse me. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness let it not be even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this is now known that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words because, for because of these things, 
the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, and therefore do not be partakers with them. Now, if you're in a church and you've been in that church for a certain period of time and you never hear what I just read to you, I can say this. I went to a church for several years, a mega church. I never heard this scripture I'm just reading to you right now about how all these things fornication, covetousness, um, filthiness, foolish talk, coarse gesturing. And now, just so you know, coarse gesturing is most of the time it's used by comedians. Comedians use it to make people laugh. But just think about how when you tell a joke at work or in school, you do it to get a laugh. And if you embellish on language or perk someone's imagination into deceptive, lustful things, then you are coarse jesting. And that's not a part of God. That's something that's going to send you straight to hell. Unless you repent, confess and repent. See, and, and I want you to see here, if you're a single person, that I just told you about fornication. I don't care what the world says. I don't care if any church talks about it. It's in the Bible. You Not only here in Ephesians 5, but you can go to Galatians 5, 19 to 21, and you'll see even more than this, that fornication is against the word of God. What is fornication, in case you don't know? Well, if you're not married and you sleep with someone, that's fornication. Mind you, if you're married or that person's married, it's adultery, plain and simple. But if you're both single, that's fornication, my friend. And fornication is against the word of God. It is. That intimacy is for marriage. You can say that's, oh, that's, oh, oh you're being all holier than thou. It's the word of God, my friend. It's the word of God. It, it's, it hasn't changed. It has not changed. It is wrong. If you're a married man, or even if you're a single guy and you lust after a girl, if you're not married and she's not married, it's still fornication. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. So if you're a married guy and you lust after a woman, you're looking at body parts and you're imagining, oh, that's lust, okay? That's fornication. That's fornication, my friend. That's an adultery. You may say, yeah, but I didn't do anything. Your eyes are the window to your soul. And in your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And in your mind, if something is planted, it can and will at one point, depending on how strong it is, overpower your will and emotions. And judgment will come upon you. But the good thing here, what we're talking about today, is that if you judge yourself, if you know that if you stare at a girl longer than three seconds, Yet you're probably go groping or goking or gawking, whatever you want to call it, and that you need to judge yourself. When you look at a woman or a man, because this goes on both sides of the street, look them in the eye, focus on their eyes. People tell the difference. Man, you might think a quick look doesn't matter, but it's still lust. And trust me, that person will know anyway. You're not, you're not pulling the wool over people's eyes. And God sees all, hears all, knows all. So you're going to have to repent because come judgment day, it'll come up. I promise you, it will come up. 
It displeases the Lord what we think and what we speak. It's supposed to be pure. If you have an issue in this area, you need to go in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it got in. What do I do about it? How do I get rid of it? I promise you, you can. I promise you, you can. And if going down, and this might affect, offend some people, but if going to the beach and you staring at girls in bikinis, you cannot tell me you don't have lustful thoughts. You need to judge yourself. Is it worth going to the beach? Now, some of you may say, yeah, I love the beach. I love sitting by the water. We'll find a different beach. So you have to protect yourself in judgment. Because once you overcome something and you get it out of you, you're not going to want it back. But if you keep putting yourself in the same situations, it's going to have the authority to come back. And at one point, it'll get back in. And it may be worse. Okay, let's go on to Revelations chapter 7 or 13, verse 15 to 17. And it says, He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark on their right hand and on their foreheads. And they know, in, excuse me, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the beast or the number of his name. Now, you may want to know why does this matter with judgment? And it matters very much, my friend. We're right now in a time where the enemy is going to try to get you to take a chip, take a mark in your hand, in your forehead. Once you do that, guess what? You've sealed your fate. There's going to be people that do it. There's going to be Christians that do it. And they're going to seal their fate. They're not going to be in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because they didn't trust God. They didn't judge the situation and trust God. If, and if you say, well, if I don't accept it, what if my family dies, my friend? You're, if that was to happen and you've done the right things, you're in the Lamb's Book of Life. The, the one thing the enemy likes to use in judgment is fear. He wants you to be fearful of judgment. But if you judge yourselves before you're judged, fear can't come in because fear is not of God. Fear is not of God. Perfect love casts out fear and God is perfect love. So the enemy may say, or the this world may say, well, you've got to take this chip or this mark to buy food. My friend, you don't. You have to, what you have to do in this judgment is to trust God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I'm going to keep bringing it up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's not going to be easy. But if you read about the disciples and the things they went through, you'll see that nothing is easy. But the reward is great. The reward is great. Now I want to read you another thing from uh, Revelation here. And in, in writing this up, the Holy Spirit gave me this one too. Because a lot of times... We, we look at the current situation and we don't look at the long range. You know, it's like when you, uh, when you buy a business and you look at short-term goals and long-term goals. You have to have a long-term goal. 
What is your long-term goal in judgment? It's to be judged by the Lord and see your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. But let's read this so you'll get a better understanding of how that applies. Now, in this, it's going to be Roman, or excuse me, Revelations chapter 20 is where we're going to be at. We're going to start with verse 4, and then we're going to go from 4 to 11 to 15. So verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark of the on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in, was in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. And then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of the fire. Into the lake of fire, excuse me. Now, I think this is really important because you're going to, when this comes around and, and you have to decide who are you going to trust, are you going to be, allow yourself to be judged by the world or do you want to be judged by God? Because that judgment will come no matter what. And the decisions you make today will determine the outcome of your sentence when you're judged. That sentence could be you could be reigning, as it said right there, reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Imagine that. Reigning with Christ for a thousand years. You, Bobby, John, Sue, Mary, Dale. How awesome that would be. The questions you would have for Christ. But knowing that all your perseverance, all your suffering that you go through right now will all be but for a small season compared to God. For a thousand years, my friend. A thousand years. But if you take that mark, if you allow the judgment of this world to make force you into taking the mark, whether it be on your hand or your forehead, whether it be a chip underneath the skin, my friend, you've already sealed your fate. It's going to be the lake of fire. That second death. If someone's already dead, They've already passed. They're still going to be judged. They're not free of that. If they've lived in sin, you know where they're going. If it was a righteous person, you know where they're going. I think this is very important in judging yourself because these little things you do down here, we're talking about maybe at best a 100-year life here on this earth or eternity with Christ. All by you. And you can judge yourself. You know People are smart. It's the enemy that convinces you you're not. It's the enemy that convinces you you need something. It's this world that puts poison in your body, that affects your mind, that'll cause you to be in sin and walk in sin and live in sin. That current, that for a few seconds pleasure, or maybe an hour pleasure, as opposed to eternity with Christ, Friend, it's really not, a, uh, it's a no-brainer. But the enemy's strong and he's going to convince you that what your family, what your spouse, what your parents, what your children, what your grandparents think is so vastly important to this 80 to 100 year life you have. And it'll separate you from what Christ just promised you, a thousand year reign. That's a long time. That's longer than um, 
Adam. Think about it. It is something for you to really look at in judging yourself. Let's go on. I, I, in closing, I, I'll come back to some of this stuff. Next, we want to go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17. And it says, Then he added, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So when you make that decision and judge yourself to walk in the word of God, to live for Christ, to be that father or mother, to lead your children to be in Christ, what you're doing is you're taking all of this sin and lawless deeds you've done in your whole life. When you come to Jesus Christ, you judge yourself. You say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I want to be done with this and this and this and this. You're not telling God something he doesn't already know. Okay? I want to keep driving that home. You're not telling him something he doesn't know. He knows all, sees all, see, knows all, sees all, hears all. What you're doing is you're confessing. And in that, their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Once you accept Christ and you've repented of those sins and you turn from them, they're gone. They're off the books. The books are wiped clean. They're wiped clean. It's not a do-over. It's a start-over. Because now your book is clean. Now you can walk upright in Christ knowing that if you're judged right now, you already know you're going to heaven. You already know you're going to be with Christ for eternity. That'll start rubbing off on your family members, on your children, your parents maybe, your friends. When people start seeing that you're living a peaceful life, and I'm going to say it that way, a peaceful life where money is not the focus, where you vacation is not the focus. What car you drive is not the focus. The focus is on the relationship with Jesus Christ. You'll have so much peace that none of this stuff. Yeah, God will let you have stuff. I, I want to be clear on that. God will let you have wants. As long as those wants don't corrupt you. As long as you stay in the word, you stay in prayer, you stay in speaking in tongues, you fellowship with like-minded believers, the enemy can't touch you. He can't. He may think he can. He may try to even convince you that he can, but he cannot. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. And it says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. This is what's important that that we tend to forget as believers. Your family may not know your private life. They may not know the secrets you have. But God knows. And on judgment, whether it's good or evil, it's going to come to light. God's going to reveal it to you. You know what you did here? You may have forgotten. Or wanted to forget. Or hope that it would never come back up to you. But the fact is it will. Sins and lawless deeds. But I want you to remember too. And this is something that a lot of times. People mistake. If you help someone out here. If you do good. And you don't boast. You don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In other words, you don't go brag. You don't post it on YouTube for everybody to see because you're trying to get something. Or to get a reward or maybe just a pat on the back. What you do in secret, God will reward openly. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. He'll reward openly. You'll be so blessed by it. And people don't even need to know that. They'll see the blessing. But when you do something, you post it. Maybe you help out a poor person. 
and, and a lot of people take this out of context. You help out someone in need, poor, you take a video of it, it affects people's emotions, and you feel good about it, and you post it on Facebook, and you get one million likes, you've got your reward, my friend. I, I, it's, it's sad because there's people that are doing good, but because they post it out there, they've already got the reward, and that's basically it. That's it. There's nothing else. It doesn't matter what you do. It's That's it. But if you do it and you help people and you don't tell people, God sees. And what God sees, he's going to reward you openly. He knows your heart. You can't lie to him. You can't hide from him. He will judge you. So judge yourself now. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? Is it to help somebody or is it to make me feel good? Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to help somebody out. I've done it myself. But you won't see no videos on YouTube of what I've done. One is was led by the spirit so it was spontaneous two I don't brag about it because I know God's already got my back the biggest thing for me with doing these things is that if I can touch somebody's heart to where they can see just how real God is that God would use somebody to do something for them that they don't know, that they don't record, that they don't even tell. The people I've helped out have never even told them my name. I just told them, God told me to do this. Because that reward is greater. That I've planted a seed in someone who may be struggling to believe if God is real. Maybe someone's already planted that seed in them and they need to be watered. And that act that you do in private waters that plant and it starts to grow. Their life starts to change. They start to go back and open that Bible and say, Father God, you are real. You are real. You do love me. That you would send someone to help me out in a need. And in that need, I want to change. See, that's the kind of judgment that puts you in the Lamb's book of life. Because you don't do it to be re rewarded openly by this world on the YouTube thousand or million subscriber. You do it because you are led by the Holy Spirit to plant that seed, to water that seed. You may even reap a harvest. That person may all of a sudden decide that... They want to give their life to Christ and they stop you and say, hey, I, I know God's real. Can you, can you help me accept God? And you take them in private. You help them give their life to the Lord. And then you guide them. Here's, here's a Bible. Can I help you with a Bible? Can I help you with this? Can I help you with that? And you do it. You don't do it openly because you're not. These rewards on earth do nothing for you. They're not going to get you into heaven. Because you've already reaped your reward. What they will do is they will show that person, and even in you, you will feel a greater love for Christ. And you'll know that come judgment day, you're written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You, there's no guessing, my friend. You're written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you have that perpetual peace that goes beyond all understanding. Nobody is going to convince you you're going to dive deeper into the Word of God and God is going to start revealing more to you and your walk that's going to shift you into what God has for you. There's a book written about everybody in heaven. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't even believe it. But there's a book written about you in heaven. God wants you to do something. I don't know what it is. That is something that you go in private, 
you ask the Lord, hey, what do you want me to do, Lord? What do you need me to do for you? And the more you ask him, and the more you align yourself with the word of God by reading, by praying, speaking in tongues, fellowshipping with the right people, the more you're going to start separating yourself from worldly stuff and that book is going to start being revealed to you. And when that book is revealed to you, you're going to start following it because you're trusting in the Lord. All right, let's try to get these last two scriptures down here. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So, when you do this judgment, this is hard, people, but it's the most rewarding. When you pray, you ask the Lord to reveal anything in you that separates you from him. Anything. And you can pray it and you pray it and you continue to pray it. Speak it in tongues. Believe that he's going to reveal. And when you're ready to deal with it, he'll reveal it. He'll reveal it. Then you have to take it. You have to repent. You have to ask for forgiveness. You remember when you ask for forgiveness, it's wiped off. I read that to you. Your slate's clean. It's gone. The world will remind you. Satan and his demons will remind you of everything you've done. Why? Because they're trying to keep you in bondage. But you have to remember, you have to remind yourself that they're wiped clean. Any sin you committed before you, from the time you gave your life to Christ forward, anything after that was before that in your old walk in your old life is gone. It's gone. And if you're like, well, I heard blasphemy and the Holy Spirit can separate me from God. Yeah, it can. It's an unpardonable sin. But if you're questioning whether you've done it, you haven't done it. And, and we'll get into that maybe on a later teaching. But you haven't done it, trust me. So don't worry about it. If you're seeking the Lord right now, you haven't done it. I want you to hear that. You haven't done it. So just wipe it off because Satan loves to use that. If you say, but I don't speak in tongues, that's okay. It's okay. If you pray about it and you want to speak in tongues, you seek the Lord, he'll, he'll do it. He'll do it. Will not speaking in tongues get you, keep you from heaven? No. No. But you're missing out on fulfillment of so much more. By not seeking it. Okay. It's like living in a condo. And living in a mansion. And I'm not using those references. For anything in specific. Okay. But that's what it's like. If. Your name is in the land's book of life. Because you repented of your sins. And you're walking with God. Speaking in tongues. Is not going to erase your name out of that book. But if you're speaking in tongues, from my own experience and from experience I've talked to other people, the Lord is going to reveal things to you that will just change everything. That stuff he may reveal to you may be in your book of stuff he wants you to do. He may want you to retire in El Paso, Texas and start a ministry where you're just you and your wife and your children. He may do that, but you wouldn't know that unless you're connected to the Holy Spirit. That God has something for you to do. And when you're in obedience and doing it, my friend, God is just going to reveal so much more stuff to you that and there's some days where I'm just so thankful of restoration he's given us that I don't deserve. But he's given it because I do seek him. I do love him. 
And I do want to spread the gospel. That's where God's got good news came from. Spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why on all these teachings, as as I pray, if I if I decide, I tell you today, I'm going to teach on this next week and it doesn't happen, don't be upset. Don't think you're being cheated out of a teaching. If the Holy Spirit, like he did with this, comes upon me and tells me, you need to talk about judgment. Because, let me read this last scripture and then I'll go into this closing part. I don't, want to, I don't want to take away from the last scripture, okay? The last scripture says it's from Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. And it says, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you've gained a brother. Now, I'm going to tell you that a lot of times, a lot of people say that's judging. But it's not. It's not judging. It's called looking out for your brother. If if you're offended by something, or maybe that person's in sin, they, they've committed adultery, fornication, maybe they were out drinking one night, drinking and driving, you saw them, and out of the love you have in Christ for that person, you approach them with humility, with compassion to speak to them, you're going to change them. My hope is that their heart would be open enough to see that you love them and that Christ loves them. But if you come at them condescending, if you come at them with judgment, then you're judging them. You may have some sin in your life that you haven't repented from that you may open a door for the enemy to use. And maybe you judge them and you had an adulterous affair yourself. Or you, you were a drunkard at one time and you never confessed that. Then judgment comes along and that's going to be open. Remember, it said good or bad. Good or bad. You want all that bad gone, my friend. The only way you're going to get that bad gone out of your life is to judge yourself right now. Look at your life. Am I truly walking as I'm supposed to walk as a believer in Jesus Christ? Am I loving everybody as Christ loved me? Am I sharing what I've received from God through Jesus Christ? Am I telling people that God loves them? Whether they want to hear it or not. If they don't want to hear it, trust me, they won't come around. And if they're in the world then you haven't lost anything, even if it's a family member. Trust me, you haven't lost anything. Continue to pray for them. One day, through your prayers, it may change. There is so much power in prayer if we just pray with an earnest heart. And if we're seeking God, we can change somebody. But we don't really change them. It, it'll really be the Holy Spirit. And if they're a person who's been saved... The Holy Spirit's going to start nudging them. You may be, your prayers may be the thing that affects them to come back to Christ. Because right now, the church doesn't do that. They teach good sermons, but they don't teach about sin. They don't teach about if what we're talking about today now, judgment. But when the Holy Spirit told me, judge, because someday you're going to be judged. And if you're going to be judged, wouldn't it be great if someone would have told you years ago to judge yourself first? To make sure that there's no things in your closet that'll separate you from God. That there's no things in your closet that on judgment day that you're told away with you, I never knew you. Because my friend, that's eternity in the lake of fire. Just read it to you out of uh, Revelations, chapter 20. That you're going to be your final place. And even if you die today and you have not rectified that, that's still your final place because you're going to be judged whether good or bad. 
My desire is that you would repent, confess your sins, repent, ask for forgiveness. Now, when you repent, you got it's got to be true repentance, my friend. You don't ask for repentance and then go do the same thing six months later and say, I fell. That's not true repentance. True repentance is turning away from sin and every time it tries to rear its head, which it's going to, because you're in a fallen world, every time it rears its head, you come against it with the word of God. The most powerful thing you can have. That's why it's called the sword of the spirit. The word of God. Very powerful. These scriptures carry authority. And as long as you stand and walk in that authority, and you come against the enemy. You don't let that enemy get even a little bit of ground. You'll be victorious. And I promise you that your family members will start to see that. And then you start praying that as they see that, that the Lord would build a desire. There's so many people that gave their life to Christ. The Holy Spirit is sitting in them and they're dead. They're dead because they're living in sin. They backslid. No one wants to tell them the truth because they're afraid. Maybe they go to church right now and the church is afraid to tell them because they might not give their tithes or offerings. And I want to tell you plain and clear, there's nothing wrong with, with, with tithes and offerings. Uh, truly, in, in ministry, if a church asks you for tithes and offerings, Go read it in the Bible. It's not about the church. It's about your blessings. If you give with a cheerful heart, the Lord's going to take care of you in everything you do. I've heard people say we're not under the law, we're under grace. But then go back and read the Ten Commandments. And tell me if they don't apply now. Tell me if the Sermon on the Mountain where Jesus talked about if you look at a woman with lust, it's adultery. And tell me that's not a law. Because it's in the New Testament. There's much more to that. Go ahead, read uh, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. And you will see what, G what Jesus spoke about. And judge for yourself. Because if you allow other people to judge you, that other person may tell you drinking or, oh yeah, it's okay you fornicated when you were young. It's okay. You don't have to repent from it. Oh, you drank, you did drugs when you were young. You don't have to repent from that. But I'm telling you, you need to. If the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, convicts your heart of something you've done, just like I told you with, with not forgiving my dad 50 years ago. If the Lord reveals that to you, you need to repent. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need not let the enemy have one piece of anything in you. Not one piece. Not one piece. Because he will use it. He will use it. And he will destroy everything. And then on judgment day, because you didn't think it was such a big deal. Lamb's book of life is open and you're not in it. <sighs> My friend, that's wow. That's so powerful. It's something to really meditate on. That, that you may be sitting there right now believing you're a solid believing believer in Jesus Christ. I'm going to use the word believer because Christian gets tossed around as just a title. But you're a believer in Jesus Christ and maybe one day something's revealed to you. Maybe you're on your deathbed and something's revealed to you. You can still repent because the Father God does not want to lose not one sheep. He does not want one soul to be out of the Lamb's Book of Life. He wants everybody. He wants everybody. But we're in a fallen world run by Satan, run by demons. And those demons seek to kill, st steal, kill, and destroy. Just like John 10, 10a says. Steal, kill, and destroy. 
Their whole purpose is to separate you, to get you to judge other people unjustly and not judge yourself. And if you don't judge yourself, if you don't look at your walk, look at what you say to other people, if you don't take seriously what it says in the Word of God, judge not lest you be judged. So much taken out of context there. People, some people will tell you that if you're, you've, um, you can judge if you're a believer, someone who's not a believer, or someone who's in sin. Eh, you know, if you haven't judged yourself, you may be stepping on grounds that uh, you don't want to step on. Judge yourself first. Always, constantly, every day, look at your life. Is there something I've done today, if it's at night that you do this, or in the morning? Have I done something that's not godly, that I need to repent of? It's so easy to get caught up in this world. Uh, if you heard my teachings before, I've told you. Driving down the road, yelling at someone, cutting me off. I don't use foul language. I don't do gestures. But I might just get angry at someone who doesn't care, who can't even hear me. And it sets in my spirit, my soul. And it affects my mind, my will, and my emotions. Not that person, because they don't care. So in judgment, I constantly have to remind myself that what I say isn't going to affect anybody. It's better just not to say. And I have to judge myself all the time for that. It doesn't matter if a pastor's been in ministry forever. He needs to judge himself all the time. And what I teach him, what God wants me to teach. Am I changing people's lives? Or am I just trying to fulfill to keep people to come back to church? You know, the church is not the building. The body of Christ is described as the church. But I, I like this word. I've heard it from, from a really well-known uh, shepherd. Fellowship. In the body of Christ, we're to be fellowship. We're to fellowship. What you have to say matters. Because you may not understand something. And you may speak it out in, in, a, in a forum. And... As you speak it out, someone may hear something that they may say in response to that that will help you judge yourself whether what you understood or what you said is really correct. If you're a person, and I'm going to say this, and you went through a divorce, you need to sit there and you need to ask yourself, what did I do wrong? Because I'm telling you that just because you went through a divorce and maybe the other person's one who initiated that divorce. Just because you went through a divorce and you feel like you were taken advantage of, you may find something in yourself that, that was a contributing factor. The Holy Spirit may reveal to you that maybe you mistreated your spouse with unkind words or unkind actions. That's all part of judgment that could keep you out of the Lamb's Book of Life. And are you going to wait until that judgment day, that final judgment day, whether you're woken from asleep or whether it's you're alive at the time and here, away with you, I never knew you. And you're like, what did I do? Well, I don't get it. You're going to know you did something. So why wait? Why wait, my friend? Why wait? Ask the Holy Spirit right now to show you anything that is not pleasing to the Lord. Anything you've done. I, I could sit here and tell you that when he revealed to me about not forgiving my dad 50 years ago, it, it was something I had never, I can honestly tell you, I have never thought about. I believe maybe a year later, it was about, now about two years later or so, I joined the army. I never thought about it. I might have been mad that day for an hour or two, and then it was out of my mind. But obviously, when the Lord revealed it to me, it was something I had to take care of. That's why judging yourself is so important, because that little thing may have been the thing that separated me from God. 
no matter what my walk is right now, if I still have unconfessed unforgiveness towards somebody, then just like the Bible says, just as he forgives, you're forgiven. If you don't forgive, he doesn't forgive you. Think about that. Let that sink in. That's some serious stuff. God loves you. He wants you to have the desires of, of, of your life. He can give them to you. But I remind you in closing, he will not give you anything that will cause you to sin. He will not do it. He loves you too much. And if you truly love yourself, judge yourself. Judge yourself. Teach it to your wife. Teach it to your husband. Teach it to your children. How to judge themselves so that when they're out there in this world, they are protected because when something the enemy tries to slip in, maybe bad language in school, in high school, that kid will walk away because he knows he can't be a part of it because it'll take him out of the Lamb's Book of Life. It could be a deciding factor. It may even sit in his spirit or in his soul and then he meets someone else and because it was a funny joke and he laughed, he may now say it to someone else to get that laugh. We've all done it. But it's a sin. Just think about that. So Father, as we close today, I just pray that everyone who hears has ears. Father, that they let this judgment, judge before you be judged, set in their soul. And that they truly look at their life and they judge, have I sinned? Is there anything in my life that would keep me out of the Lamb's Book of Life? Father, reveal it to me. I don't want it to separate me from you. I want to be in that thousand year reign with Jesus Christ. I want to be with you forever, Lord. If there's something that separates me, show me now so that I can repent. I can ask for forgiveness, whatever I need to do, Father, to make it right. I just give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Confess your sins. Confess to one another. If you're someone dealing with an addiction, whether it be alcohol, drugs, pornography, food, um, the list could go on, my friends. Videos, gaming. If you confess it to a friend, now you've brought in a prayer partner. And that prayer partner can change your life. I promise you. I even have a prayer partner. My wife has a prayer partner. Those prayer partners can change your life because it's someone you can come to and, and they come in agreement with you and they pray for you and you're successful in your fight against the enemy. So next week, I'm going to tell you we're going to start looking at, I'm going to make this proclamation. I don't know if it'll hold. It really is up to the Holy Spirit. Um, like I said before, the Holy Spirit is who guides me. He gave me this uh, yesterday. And so by his grace, my wife and I were, ever, were able to bring everything together for this. We want to talk about open doors. Before we get into demons and, and all this stuff we want to talk about how do they get in how do they get in my life and you, you're going to find it a blessing um, you'll see this on YouTube probably by tonight, tomorrow like, subscribe please so that we can now start putting stuff on YouTube direct we just ask that for you if you'd like to give to the ministry you can reach out through us to through uh, telephone or through email um it's good to give, but we don't require it, okay? But it's for you. It's not for me. I won't take away your blessing. If the Lord makes you feel like blessing, bless. If you don't feel it, don't do it, okay? That's really how it's supposed to be. And we'll see you next week. Um, if you need anything, want prayers, want deliverance, want to seek more information, just reach out to us. You have our email there. Our phone number, it's a regular landline, but it does have an answering machine. Just leave us a message, send us a, an email, 
and we'll get back to you. We have books here dealing with forg unforgiveness, forgiveness, Jezebel spirit, stuff that we've talked about. Go look on Dale Corey. You'll see a lot of other teachings that may open your eyes even more. Because remember, God's got good news. The good news is Jesus came. He paid the price for everything you could do. Except for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, Jesus already wiped the slate clean if you accept him. If you start walking with him, it's a life change. But I'm telling you, I promise you, it's well worth it. You'll never regret it. So thank you. God bless. We will see you all next week at the same time. And if anything changes, uh, we'll reach out individually to some people. Some people that follow us regularly, we'll let them know. But for the most part, it's usually Sundays at 1130 Mountain Standard Time. Thank you.